Hey everyone, welcome to my new tutorial. Today we are going to make this cute sushi illustration and I really hope you will enjoy this one and if you do, please don't forget to leave the like, it will really help me. And if you're new to the world of 3D and Blender and you want to learn in the most effective way, please be sure to check out my courses. I carefully designed them to take you from beginner skills all the way to full character illustration in the shortest time possible. So if you're interested, check out the link in the description. Now let's jump right into empty blender file and first thing I want to remove the light and the cube here so let's drag the selection press X and confirm and now let's press shift A and we'll start with the plane here we want to create the plate so let's tab into the edit mode and let's subdivide this first so right click and choose subdivide and now we can press E to extrude just like this and let's press X and choose faces to delete those and we are left with something like this now we can tab out and let's go to the modifiers tab and let's add a solidify modifier and let's increase the thickness to something, I don't know, something like 0.1 looks fine and let's check even thickness here and now we can press Control 2 um, to add subdivision modifier or even Control 3 but then don't forget to scroll down to subdivision modifier you just added um, because Control 1, 2 and 3 will add levels in the viewport but you will need to adjust this for the render as well and now just right click and shade smooth so we have our plate and let's create our first sushi piece so let's shift and right click here and let's press shift a and we'll add a plane again and let's tap into the edit mode and scale it down like this and now we can press s then y to scale it on y-axis just like that and now let's press Ctrl R to create a loop cut right here in the middle. Let's confirm with the left mouse button and right click to release. Now we can select all and press E to extrude tiny bit. And then E again to extrude much higher up like this. And now let's select these two by holding shift and press G then Z and move them down and here as well. Okay, just like that. And again, we can tab out and let's press Ctrl 3 to add really dense subdivision modifier. And we'll need to increase that density quite a lot because I want to use a displacement here. So let's go ahead and let's increase this to something like 5. Same for the render. And now let's go ahead and add another modifier and that will be the displace modifier. And we can go ahead here and create a new texture for the displacement. And let's click right here to go into the texture settings they'll just switch you right here on the texture tab and let's switch from image or movie to Voronoi texture right here and now we'll need to adjust the scale and the strength of this modifier so first of all let's go back to the modifiers and let's tone down the strength to something like 0.1 so we actually see what's happening and you know this is quite dense so let's go right back to the texture and let's play with the size until we have something like this here and now in the modifiers panel we can go minus 0.1 to actually make this go the other way not inside our mesh but outside like this okay i think this is quite all right so let's go back to the texture and let's play with the size just a tiny bit more so we have some more dense rise texture like this and now just right click and shade smooth so we can see what we have here and the density is not so great so we can go back to the modifiers and increase the levels to something like six if you wish um, but then this can get quite you know demanding on your hardware so depending on that you know you can play with these levels in the viewport and on render time and now in the size i will just go ahead and make this a little bit larger maybe and then reduce the strength to something like this and you know that'll be um, the first part of the nigiri um, that will be like the rice part so let's scale it up a little bit like this and let's shift right click on top of it to move the cursor there and let's press shift a and we'll create a plane now tab into the edit mode press s to scale it down like this and now we can select these two words let's look from the side by pressing 3 on an unpad and extrude some like this and then we can do the same thing on the other side and maybe a tiny bit more right here and now we can press a to select all alt e and extrude faces along normals and additionally we can just move this on x-axis so g then x to move it there 
and go back into the edit mode press a to select all and we can make it a little bit wider so s then x and scale it up and now let's press ctrl r and create two loop cuts right here so increase the number of cuts with the mouse wheel and then confirm with the left click and right click to release and now we can tab out and press ctrl 2 to add the subdivision modifier and they'll create a shape like this so now we can right click and shade smooth and it'll be great to unwrap this so we can use our texture later so let's tab in and basically i just want to mark these corner edges and then the bottom edges around and unwrap it so let's press 2 for edge select alt click here to select the loop now hold alt and shift and select all of these loops around like this and now let's continue holding alt and shift and click these corner edges right there until we select them like that and now press u and choose mark seam and now press a to select all press u again and choose unwrap you can see it right here in the uv editing workspace this is your unwrapped model so now we have you know piece of our fish and we can create some materials for it and i want to use procedural techniques to create some materials but before we do that let's go into the render settings and enable ambient occlusion and screen space reflections so we have some nicer previews in the material preview and now switch ev to cycles let's go for gpu if you have one and let's enable some denoising and i will reduce the samples to something like 512 and now we are ready for the materials so let's hold z and let's go for that material preview and this is our ev settings applied that's why i prepared them beforehand and now let's select the plate let's go for the materials tab and let's create a new material i will call this plate and you know create something like this here and give this a little bit more roughness just like this and now i'll select the rice and create the rice material And let's give this a little bit warmer color so it's not you know pure white something like this and i will just hover over the color press ctrl c and then paste it in the subsurface color as well and set subsurface to something like 0.1 that will make the light you know go through the surface a little bit and make it tiny bit translucent and now let's increase the roughness a little bit because the rice isn't supposed to be like so shiny and now for the fish that'll be most complex material so let's switch to the shading workspace and let's click the salmon piece and press period on a keyboard to focus our viewport on that and now let's create a new material let's call this salmon let's zoom out a little bit here and let's press shift a and choose texture and gradient texture and we'll obviously use linear gradient so let's press shift a and let's add a converter and color ramp this is something we'll use to adjust that gradient and then we can plug in some mapping so let's press shift a and let's go for vector and mapping let's plug it right here and then let's add another node and there'll be input and texture coordinate and we'll use uh, the uv texture coordinate and plug it right here into the vector and here with the mapping we'll just have an option to rotate you know and scale our gradient texture so they'll be really helpful here so let's preview our color ramp so i'll just drag this color here and plug it to the surface and now we can see how the gradient actually looks and let's switch this to constant because we don't want the gradient we just want to be switching between black and white here and let's drag the white right here just like this and let's hit this plus we'll need to create several of them so let's make it even more dense let's hit the plus and just move it outside like this and we'll continue like this and create some more of these okay just like that should be quite enough and we can now try to rotate this um, i think the negative direction will be fine so something like minus 70 because i want them to go a little bit diagonally and then we can you know move this along its x-axis so we get rid of some of that ugliness and basically this is what i wanted to create and now we can press shift a and we can go for color and mix rgb and plug the color into the factor here and let's create the first color 
um, you know, some salmon pink color like this. But we can't see it happening here because remember, we have the color ramp plugged right here. So let's plug this one into the surface. And now we can see result of this node right here. And we can just press Ctrl C here and paste the color and make it a little bit darker. So we have something like this. But maybe I want to bring this more towards red because there was quite you know uninteresting color there so yeah something like this is fine and let's just plug this right here into the color and the shader into the surface so we can see it shaded you know with roughness and everything and now we can zoom out here and let's press shift a and we'll add vector and bump and we'll plug the noise texture in so let's press shift a let's go for texture and noise texture and again, let's preview that so we get the density right. So we have something like this in place and the mapping isn't right. And I want to use the UV mapping here. So let's just plug the UV map right here. And let's work with the scale. So we have something, you know, really dense like this, something like a 90. And then we can press Shift A and create another converter color ramp, you know, so that we are able to modulate this to you know change the value intensity the bump intensity so let's bring this closer towards gray tones so it's not so you know pronounced and now we can plug the color into height information and normal channel to normal channel of our principal shader but again don't forget to connect this again and they'll create a bump for us, but probably they'll be too strong here. So let's reduce the strength to something like 0.1 or 0.15, depending on how strong this effect you want to be. And maybe then again, you can play with the scale if you want it a little bit larger, for example. And now we can use the same noise texture to play with the roughness information. So again, we'll create another color ramp. So we can select and press Shift D to duplicate this one. And let's drag the factor into the factor here and color into the roughness. So we have some variation in roughness as well. And then, you know, you can make it a little bit less rough if you want. Um, so that means bringing it closer towards white tones and maybe flipping it. Um, so that will mean that the bumps are more glossy and the ridges are a little bit rough so yeah that's everything we need to do in terms of nodes um, but additionally i want to plug this color information into the subsurface color as well and give some subsurface value here as well so we get you know something more interesting there and now let's switch back to the layout view and i will hold shift s and snap cursor to world origin and let's press shift a and we'll add light and area light let's press g then z and move it up like this and let's increase to something like 250 and now we can press 0 on an ampad to go for a camera view select the camera and press g then z twice to bring it closer and then you can hit n for a side panel go to view options and then enable camera to view and then you will be able to position your camera using your standard viewport controls just don't forget to disable it when you are satisfied Okay, and now let's press Ctrl B and limit our view only for camera bounds and we'll add the background. So let's press Shift A and let's add a plane, press S to scale it up and let's give this some material and I want to go something like a dark violet or dark blue color. And now we can hold Z and switch to the rendered view. And this is what we have here. Now I will select the salmon, hold Shift, select the rice and press Ctrl P and parent so we are able to rotate this and move it as one and then I will select both press alt D and then shift Z to move it like this and create another one so we have something more interesting here and this is I think a little bit too pink so let's go to the shading options and we can play with the color here so we can give this like a more orange tone a little bit of that saturation like this and then try to bring this closer, I don't know, towards red or something like that. I think this will look much better. And yeah, even more towards red, I think. 
Okay, I like this and this should be maybe more orange. So let's go back to the layout view and yeah, basically there's your sushi. Maybe I will just go ahead and increase roughness of the background and to make this look a little bit nicer, um, we can go ahead in the world settings, increase the world color and change its color to have something to blend everything together like this. And then of course you are able to add some more lights, for example. So if you duplicate this one and switch the pivot point to 3D cursor, you can rotate it 45 degrees around X axis and then around Z axis and create some nice backlight and nice reflections right there. And maybe change the color of this to give this a little bit more interesting look just like that. Um, yeah, just go ahead, play around with this. Um, maybe you can make this a little bit larger. So it's a little bit more soft light coming from top and things like that. And you know, you can then create all kinds of different assets around. You can create sticks, you can create like a um, piece of wasabi there. You can create a bowl with um, soy sauce and stuff like that. So really you can get creative and finish your scene however you want it. But these are the basics I wanted to show you how to create, you know, really quick illustration like this for maybe like marketing purposes or as an icon or something like that. So that's it for today's sushi tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed this one. And if you did again, please leave that like. And if you're new around here, please hit that subscribe. Thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day. Yeah.